Hey guys, it's Sarah from Just My Typewriter and I'm here today with a collection update. So 2022 has been a very, very, very strange year and also a very long year for me. I started out the year living at my parents' house. I was doing job interviews while finishing up working on my graduate classes and then I started working on my dissertation. I finished my dissertation and got my PhD in the summer. The day I had to hand in my dissertation was actually my moving day for this new apartment. So I did move in the middle of the summer and I got a brand new job. And then since then I've been working at my new job and learning a lot about teaching <laughs> and being in a new place and living on my own far away from my family. So it's been a little bit stressful and it's made this year feel like it was three different years all smushed into one very fast paced, caffeine fueled, daydream, almost a nightmare sometimes kind of experience. But throughout that, typewriters have been with me. I mean, I moved with all of them. So I wanted to go through my collection today and give you a little bit of an update of what I still have in my collection, what I'm looking for, and what I'm planning for for my collection. So as of right now, filming this video, first week in December, I have 29 typewriters. I had quite a few more, but I actually have started going through the process of whittling down my forever collection and figuring out which ones I wanna keep and which ones I want to sell and which ones I'm still looking for to kind of complete things. I've learned about myself. I have a bit of a completionist problem where I like to have the full set of things and I like to look for things to complete the full set, which is why I have a Smith Corona 5 series problem and why I'm still actively seeking to complete that set. So to go through the typewriters I did get this year. I started out the year and I got a Brother 440T. Now it was um, name badged as a signature from Ward, Montgomery Ward, and I did get that typewriter. I was in the newspaper last year around December, and a few people did contact me from when I was in that article, and they sold me their typewriters. I got a Smith Corona out of that. I got a console typewriter of that. I got rid of both of those <laughs> in December, and then I had another lady contact me in January who saw my face on the front page of the paper, and she had a Montgomery Ward Signature 440T that she wanted to get rid of. So I met her in a parking lot and she just gave me the typewriter for free. And that was in January before a big snowstorm. So that was my first typewriter of the year. I had a phone call from another lady who called me and she's like, I have these two typewriters. I just want to get rid of them. And I saw your face in the paper. So she just stopped at my house one day, middle of February, and dropped off an Underwood Master, Touchmaster 5, a big desk typewriter. And then she also gave me a Corona, Smith Corona Electra CT electric typewriter. Both of these typewriters are in really great condition and I can't turn down a free typewriter. So I did end up with two of these typewriters as well. Then later in February, I went antiquing in where did I go? Maryland. And I ended up with the console behind me, my mystery typewriter. I found that in an antique store in Maryland and I bought that for about $15. Later that month, I also went antiquing where my sister lives and I found the type of tune. So I also had a video on that. I found the type of tune typewriter, which Technically, I don't count as a typewriter. If I did, I'd have 30, but I did buy that in February as well. I also was at an estate sale during that time and I found my Remington Quiet Writer, which I did a video as well on that one. Really moldy, I bought it for $5, so it wasn't too much of an investment. That was a really easy clean for me. And then in the summer, after I moved, my mom found the Smith Corona flat top and then my green machine, my Smith Corona, where is it? Oh, it's up there. My Smith Corona Silent Super from the 1950s. I got both of those machines, I think for around $30. And I added those to my collection as well. And I haven't bought another typewriter since. I, I had one sent to me and it's in a box right next to me and I haven't opened it yet. But other than that, that has been all I have bought this year and all the typewriters I've had in my collection that year. But that is nine typewriters. However, I did sell or rehome 10 typewriters this year, which means I'm still like doing okay. <laughs> After receiving some of those free typewriters and then also buying some typewriters, at the beginning of the year, I ran into another collector in my local area and I was able to sell him an electric aristocrat typewriter that I had gotten for Christmas that was broken and I had repaired it. And then I also sold him that uh, Montgomery Ward Signature 440T Brother Rebadged Typewriter. I sold both of those to him and now he and I talk about typewriters all the time. He was in my local area. He took both of those home. I 
sent my console 233 to my pen pal who lives in Ohio um, so that he got that typewriter so that got rid of another one. I also sent my Royal Safari 2 which was another broken typewriter I got for Christmas. I repaired that one and then I sent that out to a young subscriber. His mom messaged me and I sent Timmy, a subscriber of mine, the Royal Safari 2 that I had in my collection. I also repaired that Remington Quiet Writer that I had bought for five dollars. I cleaned it and repaired it and I sold that to a woman in Virginia. I did do a vlog on that as well which I will link down below. I then had a broken or unrepaired Underwood 6 that I had been kind of saving to do a big project on and then as I was moving my mom said hey I need a typewriter for the drama department at my school do you have anything that might be a little bit broken or you wouldn't mind kids messing around with it and using it as a prop so I sold her my Underwood 6 not Claire my Underwood 6 I've had forever but a broken Underwood 6 that I cleaned up and they're going to now use that in their place as a prop so I did rehome that one as well I then after I moved Moved, I sold my Electra CT, that electric typewriter, to someone locally in my new area. I also repaired the Corsar that I had gotten as a trade in December of last year. I sold that to somebody who had bought a typewriter from me before after I fixed it, so I sold her that one. I then sold something else. I then sold my second Underwood Golden Deluxe typewriter. I had two of these. I bought one for $5 at a storage locker at an antique store. I repaired it, I cleaned it up, and then I sold that to another collector. Again, on this side of the state, I sold that a couple weeks ago. And then I did rehome my Royal 10 from 1922. Not Monster, my Royal 10, but my first Royal 10, which was the 10th typewriter I ever bought. I rehomed that with my pen pal, Doug from Ohio. He was driving through the area and it went home with him. So I also rehomed another big desk typewriter in my collection. I sold the Underwood Touchmaster 5 to another collector as well. So I got rid of another desk machine in my collection so I didn't have to move with that one either. So I sold 10 typewriters. I got nine new typewriters. Somewhere in there it all kind of almost evened out. And I currently have 29 typewriters and a type of tune. Now if we break that down by category and the numbers, I have four electrics, four Barbie typewriters, six standards, four lightweight portables, 11 portable typewriters, and one type of tune. Of those based on brand, I have two Remingtons, one console, four Barbies, one brother, one tower machine, uh, one Olivetti, my big Olivetti Linea 98. I have two IBM machines, one Underwood, I still have my original Underwood 6, one Adler, five Royals, which includes my Royal Monster Project from last year, one Olympia, it's an electric typewriter, and then eight Smith Coronas. Of these, the oldest one I have in my collection is actually now my Monster Royal 10, which is from 1932, and my newest make machine in my collection is actually one of my Barbies from 2006. I found this year that I really started to gravitate a lot towards Smith Corona machines. I was doing a lot of repair at home at my parents' house. I would work on machines during the day and then work on my dissertation at night. And I really found that Smith Corona machines I understood really well. I felt like I could take them apart, clean them. They felt really comfortable to me, like I understood them, and I didn't always have to ask for help for them like I had to on some of my other machines in my collection. So I really liked working on those machines just because I felt like I could do it on my own. So I started to really gravitate a lot more towards Smith Corona machines, except for Corsair Deluxes. That project made me want to tear my hair out, and I did get rid of some of the Royals in my collection. I still have a few of them. I still really like the Royal Tens, and I have a Royal Safari up here that types in script that I just really enjoy, and I have my Royal Futura still because it has the push button front, and that's like my favorite thing. I still have one broken typewriter in my collection. It is the Remington Deluxe 5 that I found in an antique store in January of 2021. So I've had it for two years. I was able to fix and repair every other typewriter in my collection before I moved and then clean the two new ones that I got after I had moved. But this one just sat under the table for two years, never figured out what was wrong with it, never really got to it. So I have one broken typewriter still and that is my winter project is to finish that one so that I have 30 working typewriters. 
29 working typewriters in my collection. But I also did a lot of really cool things with typewriters this year that I'm very excited about. I started off the year by traveling to Disney World with a typewriter in my backpack. I took my Skywriter and I had such a really fun time and I'm so glad that I did it because who else can say that they've taken a typewriter to Disney? Myself and Jack from Tampa Typewriter and maybe a few other people. But I just really enjoyed doing that and having evidence of it on the internet, having that video that I did where I took a typewriter to Disney World. I also antiqued in a lot of places, Maryland, other parts of Pennsylvania, Virginia, West Virginia. It was just a really cool time to go into antique stores as well and travel as things were opening back up. And I was really good. I didn't buy a lot of things this year, so I'm very proud of myself for that as well. I also did a lot of repairs this year, probably more than I've ever done before. After I moved back home to work on my dissertation and I was teaching online at the time, my dad and I went through my collection and we fixed a lot of the problem typewriters I had had. And I would start one, finish it, and then move on to the next one. Or I would clean typewriters on my own and then figure out what I needed help with. So I got through a lot of typewriter repair this year specifically. Also with the deadline of like moving in July, I had a really nice motivation to finish a lot of the projects I had started working on. I think some of my biggest repair jobs this year were definitely the Corsair Deluxe that I worked on that took me six months. That was a really difficult, frustrating project, but I learned so much doing that process, even though I felt like I took it apart and put it back together eight times. I also found that working on the typewriter case that I repaired, I replaced a zipper on a typewriter case, like in the middle of the year, and it's one of my lower viewed videos, but that project took me two weeks. I learned so much doing that project and it was one of my bigger projects for me this year personally working on it just because I worked on it for two weeks straight and that was the only thing I did for two weeks. So that was another big project for me on a personal level that I got through this year. In addition, the channel turned four years old this year. My collection turned four years old this year. I started collecting in 2018. Also started making videos in 2018. So we had our big four year anniversary this year. I turned 26, my car turned 27, and Diamond turned 14 this year. I also learned a lot from other typewriter collectors. I did a lot of research on consoles this year. This has kind of been the year of like deep diving into the history on some of the machines in my collection, specifically my console. I also learned about Underwood Red nail polish this year, which was so fascinating to me and a thing that I'm still hunting for in the wild. I did a little bit more research on Barbie typewriters. And then I also learned just other technical terms and I found typewriter tools and I learned how to use a lathe this year. That was huge. My type of tune project, the most fun I've ever had working on a typewriter and personally the most rewarding. And I learned how to use a jeweler's lathe while working on that project, which makes me feel really cool. Well, and a drill press. I also learned that I've been saying pica wrong my entire life. I call it pica, which to me sounds like the more fun way to say it, but I was very uh, swiftly corrected that it is pica, so pica as a size of font and typeface. I also learned this year that there is no actual official ultra portable as a term used in the typewriter history. So we look at smaller machines that come in those nice soft leather cases or that have their case toppers, things like the Skywriters or the Corsairs or the Olivetti's that come in those soft cases. We call them ultra portables in the collector's community, but they were never referred to that in the original advertising. They were always called lightweight portables. And even some of the Hermes machines that started out as kind of the first iterations of that were called featherweight. So now I'm trying to correct myself and go back and call them lightweight portables instead of ultra portables. So that was a new thing I learned this year. The machine I used the most this year for typing was probably my Adler J3. It's my first Adler machine. I love it. It is amazing. I was also really surprised by my Smith Corona flat top that I got halfway through the year. Such a smooth typewriter. I really, really love it. The typewriter I used the least was the Broken Remington, but quickly followed by my Monster Royal 10. I still have to do some adjustments on that machine. It's, it's not all the way there yet for proper use. Moving forward, I have a wish list for machines that I am looking for. I still have that qualification of nothing can be over $25. I will not pay more than that for a typewriter. 
most times because I still want to keep myself kind of in check for collections. I also don't want to go over 30 because I think that is just unmanageable for me personally. There are some machines that I have here that I'm ready to kind of part with and rehome now that they're repaired and I don't use them very often. I think it's time for them to go to people who will love them and use them all the time. And as I get rid of some of those, I also want to make sure that I'm bringing in new things that I'm looking for. So on my wish list is a music writer of any kind. I know they have some Olympia sized music writer typewriters. I saw an advertisement recently for a Smith Corona machine that had music uh, on the number row. They had music icons and notes, notation devices. How do you say that? Notation symbols on the number row of a Smith Corona typewriter. I'm looking for one of those. I'm related to a ton of musicians and I played music for a really long time. I played the violin for more than a decade and I used to write music, so I think it would be really cool to have a typewriter where you could use the notation symbols on that to write your own music. So I'm looking for a music writer typewriter. I'm also trying to finish out my Smith Corona 5 series. I have all of my Smith Corona 5 series except for a silent model. I don't think I've ever seen one in person, but I would love to have a silent model in Alpine Blue. I'm a blue typewriter person. I love blue typewriters, so I would like to run into one of those but under my you know, $25 limit. And then one that I'm always kind of looking for is a Royal Ultronic in bright green with wood paneling. They're ugly, they look crazy, they look heavy like a boat anchor, and I want one. So I'm looking for a puke green Royal Ultronic electric typewriter just because I think they look awesome, but also like aesthetically displeasing, and there's something about that that I love. So that has been my year in collecting. That is my collection update. I want to know how many typewriters you guys have found this year and what your collection number is up to. We like to do this in the Typewriter Collectors Facebook group. Every once in a while we check our numbers. Right now I'm at 29 and a type of tune, which I think I'm okay with for a little while. But I'd love to know what kind of machines are you looking for? What was your best find of the year? I think my best find this year was definitely that console. I'm just, I'm obsessed with it. And then I also wanna know how many typewriters you have. What's your number up to? Did you beat me? Good for you. <laughs> Are you underneath my number? If so, I'm proud of you. <laughs> if you're interested in more typewriter content, I do have some more videos on this YouTube channel, and I also have an Instagram at just.my.typewriter. I want to thank you all so much for watching, and remind you, you're just my type. Writer. For those of you who are curious, the last typewriter I got this year is in a box from England and I haven't opened it yet because I'm waiting. I don't know what I'm waiting for. I think I'm afraid to open it and admit that I have another one.